So, so we've, we've got to we got to in, infiltrate the sharkies and steal the trident back. Oh goodness, a shark. Uh, hello. You glance at the shark nervously, but it does not seem to be paying you much attention. Fortunately. All right, that is that is not a sharky. That's just a shark. Sinewy seaweed wavers in the ocean tide. See, you almost had had some alliteration going there, and then you kind of forgot about it. Uh. Oh, that's a sharky though. You saw a sharky in the sea. He quickly made a meal of thee. If you want your life prolonged, next time don't delay so long. I tried. You can't rhyme prolonged with so long. That's fake. That's fake. Uh, I guess No Mitten says, of all the King's Quests, this one has the most innuendo title. This is the remake. Romancing the Throne didn't have quite as, as innuendo a title. Uh, nope. You saw a sharky in the sea. Okay. Those sharks look like they have human teeth, and that's weird. Y you can't name a word with itself. And, uh,. And, like, especially when it has the same meaning. Ooh. These small, luminescent fish are feeding on a strange-looking plant. Can I have some? Get there is nothing of interest. There is no You lean over and pick some of the grass, which yeah. grows in between the rocks. Luminescent grass. That's, that's good. Okay, I got out. It's it's the same thing. Nah, I don't think it passes at all. But then again, I uh there's a song that I really look that I really like that goes uh what is it? So don't you dare look back, just keep your eyes on me. I said, she said you're holding back. I said you're holding back, she said shut up and dance. And I don't, I don't mind the look back and holding back, because even though it is, it is, like, actually the same word, it feels like different meanings to me. Like, holding back is, like, internal, and then looking back is a, is a behind. I don't know. Either way, this, uh, this fish is going into this wall here. And I'm not sure I'm ready but let's see. Visible wall. The western wall is but an illusion. You easily pass through it into a series of caves and tunnels mm. on the other side. A series it's of caves. Black in here. You cannot see a thing. You'll need to find some sort of light source before you are able to proceed. But I have the... It's pitch black. In... Okay. Whoa. That was kind of weird. I have the thing, but I guess I need something to put it in. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely critical of things I like. I. This oh. is the main entrance to the Sharky's fortress. No. Oh. Maybe a frontal approach wasn't such a good idea. Nah, I'm definitely critical of things I like. But looking back and holding back feel different to me. I like the sun there. That's that's cute. I'm always going to die. You saw a sharky in the sea. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> 
So what I think I'm looking for here is a bottle. There's gotta be something in here, right? Debris from a wrecked vessel lies strewn and half buried on the seabed. Seeing no remains of the crew, you wonder if they were eaten before or after they drowned. That's that's you morbid. Get... Examining mm. the heavily waterlogged remnants of the vessel, you notice an old antique bottle half buried in the sand. With great difficulty, you lean over in your saddle and manage to scoop it up. All right. What's it got in it? It is a clear bottle with a cork at the end. Inside, you can see a large piece of cloth which has been meticulously folded up. You remove the cloth from the bottle. But now I have a lamp. You stuff the sugary grass into the empty bottle and push it all the way to the bottom. I, I think. It is a clear bottle. Oh, I know. I know. I've got it. What must it be like to be a normal shark living in a realm full of sentient sharks? That's gotta be weird. Okay, so I've got the sugar, I've got the grass in the bottle, and now I put it here, and then the bugs you go in it. You place the baited bottle on the seabed, close to the luminescent fish. A few of the glowing fish are now swimming around inside the bottle. Boop. You take the bottle. Now I have a lamp. Okay, let's get it. The Western Wall. Okay. Where am I going? This way, you know. Oh, goodness. Ooh. A large opaque shell seemingly blocks a tunnel to the north. Whatever lies in that direction must be very important. You can't budge the shell. Hmm. Well, I can't go that way. This didn't seem like it had any branching areas. Oh no. Yeah, all right, okay. Let's try some inventory. Okay. So without prying it open. This old stake would not be sturdy enough to lever the massive door open. Levering. Yes. Okay, what about the sword, which you used for every inventory puzzle so far? Oh, leaving you slide horse behind. Your blade through a small gap in the door and pull with all your might. It is difficult handling your weapon underwater, and you realize oh, that combat lewd. will not be an option. So if it ever comes to that, you are in big trouble. As you open the door, ample light floods into the underwater cave, and you are now able to make your way around without the glowing fish. You release your captive fish. Uh. Uh. My mouse is freaking out. Oh, cute! You've got a swim icon now. Mouse. Okay. That's cute. Oh, 
No, we found them. Oh, oh no. no! The seahorse has followed you. Let's hope it doesn't give your presence away. You are safely concealed behind the remnants of a stone archway. This is fortunate, as the king of the sharkies is also the here. The king of the sharkies. His menacing appearance, he also seems to be in a very bad mood. Ah, uh, this just looks like that. It. It work for me. What a face. Is it not written the trident's power can only be wielded by those of goodwill? Well, is it not? The king's aides nod fervently. And do I not possess the greatest will in this kingdom? No one can best me in battle. My resolve is unshakable. No amount of leading to dissuade me from slaughtering my enemies. That's a good line. Does this not signify that my will is the best there is? The Sharky King's aides seem all too willing to agree. Then why does it not work? You watch carefully as the Sharky King taps four shells in order around the arch. Oh no. It's a three, one, one, six. It matters not. Tomorrow we invade the Mer people's territory. For without the Trident's power, that old fool Neptune and his weakling followers will fall before our might. Goodwill. Ha! Mine is superior to all. As he leaves, the Sharky King motions for his guards to remain. Hmm. All right. Hmm. So, uh... Having an idea, you approach your somewhat reluctant steed and slap him hard on the back. Yeah. Oh, I hope you were okay. The guards are momentarily distracted. Now is your chance. Okay. Insert your own yakety sacks here, I guess. You push on the... We could skip it. That's cute. All right. Well, Without I might as well delay, take the trident. You snatch up the trident before the guards return to their posts. It appears as if the guards are losing interest in the seahorse. You had better get out of here quickly. Ah, uh, I'm very bad at getting out of here quickly. Oh, I did it. Oh no! The seahorse has followed you all the way back to the secret entrance. The guards are sure to discover you now. What, Graham? You were just gonna leave the seahorse to die? You remount the seahorse. Your seahorse glides onward, flicking its little tail faster than ever. You grip the reins tightly, glancing nervously over your shoulder every so often to check for pursuing sentries. As you make distance, your anxiety melts into relief. But it is to be short-lived. And now, a short arcade sequence. Let's do it. See, it'll point out when there are rocks. And, uh, you try not to hit them, basically. It's a right-sided rock kind of day, I guess. Oh, goodness. Okay. You can do sequences like this and more. All of the wonderful things you can do with AGS. Oh no. I did the bad thing. Finally, you but not bad enough. At the end of the tunnel, you quickly make a dash for the exit. Why do people put mechanics in their adventure games? As you emerge, you realize you have only seconds before the guards come out after you. And even if you could outrun them, you're sure the commotion would attract the sentry's attention. Then you'd be in real trouble. 
Suddenly, you hear a strange voice in your head. Be of noble and good will, royal trident thou may wield. Okay, use trident on wall. Shoop. You wonder what that did, if anything at all. And... Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, so uh, we're done. And I think... What if I use another shark? The shark is not paying you much. Okay. What if I do it on the sharky? Shoop! Turn him into a little fish. You can't use. The, you can't. The fish isn't. Turn him into a little fish. Well, now that we've murdered one dude, just you know, because we're mad with power. Uh, I guess we might as well do another. <laughs> sure is fun. Ah, we made it. We we made it. The trident guides you back to Neptune's realm. Oh, it's convenient. Since they didn't leave any guards for me. Hey buddy, I did your thing. You approach the king. He smiles and graciously accepts his trident from you. Then he calls everyone to attention. To commemorate the return of my trident and to honor King Graham's success. I hereby call for a celebration. Yay! The celebration lasts for some time. You eat, drink, and have a merry time with many of the Mer people. After a few hours, the festivities wind down, and you finally have a chance to speak with Neptune alone. All right. Determined oh. Nature represent the three stages of life. Water gives birth to life, and thus what I have given you is the first of three. Second is the growth gem, or air gem, for air sustains life and permits it to grow. Oh, okay. How might I find the growth gem? You don't have a bubble I on your ear or mouth. Its location you is liar. Far above the surface of the land, as we are below it. Beyond that, I cannot aid you. A smirk crosses Neptune's face momentarily. You might say that air is not exactly <laughs> my element. I would totally say you that. You decide that the beverages consumed were to blame for that one. And the third gem, your majesty? Third is the death gem. The death gem. The completion of life and the natural order of things. The Ore of Destiny understands this now, as did the ancients who imprisoned the soul within. Wait, that door was a person? As for that gem's location, I had hoped you would have no business venturing to the castle. Kalima was once ruled from that place, but sadly her people have not seen their lord for quite some time. But if you please, I would prefer not Yeah, Neptune's to head does not. Ah, eh, whatever. Doesn't you have to be have human. Done me a great service this day, and I thank you. Good luck, King Graham, and good speed. You depart the underwater kingdom and head back towards the surface. Ooh, we did it. What an incredible experience. You are certain you will never forget the adventure you just had. Additionally, you have acquired one of the gems. Ooh. As you resurface, you realize that the magic which allowed you to breathe underwater has now subsided. All right. Oh, we got one of the gems. Uh, what was it? Water or birth gem? Birth gem get... So now it's it's midday, so we can go into the the town, and we can probably talk to the li not the librarian, but like the ancient curator lady.
to any second now. Oh, and we also got this tissue. Here, this might help your sneezing. Handkerchief, oh, I guess. Thanks. I love the voice for the haystack thing. Here, you can have this back now. You retrieve the partially used cloth from the haystack. Gross. Feel better? Yeah, it's so good to be able to. Is it a needle? You take the silver needle. Of course it is. Anyway, this should be open now. There's certainly some stuff to look at here. It is a tiny harp. How cute. It is a red sorcerer's hat. Apparently, this interesting looking item is a Model DX cartridge retrieval unit. Quite a useful little device in another time and place. Mm -hmm. A strange cylindrical and slender container sits high upon the shelf. The markings on it read 7-Up. What on earth is that thing? Is Daventry even on earth? Obviously, the Swiss haven't quite got the idea yet. You are inside a cute little... No. You are in... You are in... There are some vase... There are... You are in... Alright, I guess that's all there was to look at, really. Ah, dragon fire! Oh, no, wait. It's just a mounted dragon head. Who? Uh, Quest for Glory 5 dragon fire was uh, pretty reviled as, a, as an entry to the series. An expensive-looking statue catches your eye. It is sculpted of white marble and appears You do find a needle in a haystack in King's Quest V. Within the shop. You find it quite odd that this grand statue is situated. You are in Okay, well, hello. Oh wait, there's a A rather beaten and tarnished brass lamp is positioned on the countertop. So in the original, you I forget exactly what you do. Uh, I think you get her bird back from Hagatha. And she gives you this magic lamp. You use a magic lamp, there's a genie, you get three items, basically. Uh, a magic carpet, and some other stuff. Uh, let's see what happens this time. Good afternoon. What can I do for you, dear? Hello. Do you sell anything that would aid in ascent of a mountain? Unfortunately, I do not sell climbing equipment, or anything of that sort. This is really a specialist store. Oh. However, I do have an item which you might find useful. This lamp is said to contain a genie. Never tried it myself, of course. I do not believe in using magic to solve my problems. Mm -hmm. Nature has made us as we are, and we should be glad of that. Uh-huh. How much for the lamp? The old lady hesitates. You sense she wants more from you than your money. You hope it is not anything that you will regret. Well, seeing as how you are a man who seems adept at taking care of himself, perhaps you could do a small favor for me? Somehow, you knew she was going to say that. <laughs> I once owned a beautiful nightingale. Quite rare around here. But the sentimental value far outweighs its monetary worth. That foul old witch, Hagatha, has stolen it from me. Probably to use in some concoction or another. Her nose screws up in disgust. So, if you could be a sweetie and retrieve it for me, I will trade you. The lamp for the bird. Agreed? <sighs> well, I will see what I can do. Do be careful. If Agatha should spot you out of her good eye, then you'll be in for it. So yeah, the problem is that, you know, it's... You get zapped if you go into a cave, but... Does everyone want to stream tonight? I tried to, uh... I don't know. I'm pretty sure I don't know anyone who's streaming. Bird. This, this, this game has a lot of bird. Okay. Okay. So... 
Let's see. Yeah, if we just walk in, we die. You saw black glow. You did not slow. Okay. It is a human skull. As you face mm. the skull towards the image of the bat above the cave, you notice that its wing has faded slightly. However, you suspect that whatever danger the bat represents is still in effect. Ah, so I bet this one needs a gem. I have a blue glowing gem. As you attempt to place the birth gem into the skull, you discover that it does not fit properly. Instead, it juts out uselessly like a bulging eyeball. Nice. Uh, can I hammer it in? You gently tap the birth gem with the mallet, hoping not to break it. It budges only slightly. You give it a harder hit. It moves a bit more. You hold your breath and give the gem an <laughs> almighty thwack. It pops into the skull. I'm not sure that was a good idea, Graham. With the birth gem now firmly in place, you turn the leftmost skull so that it faces the bat symbol above the cave entrance. The power of the two skulls combined has caused the bat symbol to disappear. You sense whatever danger it represented has now subsided. The power of the two skulls combined. Alright, well, that seemed to go about as well as I could expect. Shoop. Oh. As you enter, you are almost overwhelmed by the foul stench which molests your nostrils. It is obviously coming from whatever Hagatha is cooking in that large cauldron of hers. There are some things of interest on the other side of the cave, but you have no means of crossing over there safely at this time. The aged nightingale sits on the floor near the northern cave wall. The light from outside barely penetrates the interior of this cave. So long as you keep your distance, Hagatha shouldn't notice you. All right. So, which one do you think's her good eye? The one facing the screen? Uh-oh. Hagatha has seen you. All right. Well, you are the gentleman. Saving me a lot of trouble by coming here. Oh, no! You wandered into the witch's lair, and where you stood gave not a care. She soon saw you, a smile she gave. Your flesh, your blood, your bones she craved. That's a good one. I like that a lot. That's that's good. That's a good death. Anyway, let's, uh... A simple but elegant black cloak hangs on a stand. Can I take it? Being as quiet as a mouse. You slide your hand inside the cloak to discover a deep pocket. Amongst sticky and disgusting spell ingredients, you find a tiny silver key and a peculiar golden ring-shaped device. I'll take it. The blue and the blood with bone and flesh. Uh... I need to put this over the, uh... Get... Okay. It will make my complexion young and fresh. You silently drop the cloth over the cage. So it doesn't freak out. Upon attempting to lift the birdcage, you know- Oh, okay. Ah, so it's making sure I got the, the disc. Inducing time you slide the, the silver key fail. into the lock. It fits. You turn it silently, and the chain falls to the ground. Silently. Without making a sound, you take the nightingale into your possession. Just put it right in your pocket. Is a sweet nightingale. And I'm out. Uh-oh. Hag what? Well, you are the gentleman. Saving me a lot of trouble by coming here. I can't click. You wandered into the witch's lair, and where you stood gave not a care. She soon saw you, a smile she gave, your flesh All your right. blood. Okay, let's make this a little quicker. Need... Uh... Being is... You hear Agatha begin... The fluid you of sl blood, with bone and flesh. You suck... Without it will make my complexion young and fresh. Okay. 
This skull is thick. Okay, uh, so I need that back. You cannot remove the birth gem while the blue light is streaming from it. All right, more smashing. You strike the skull with all your strength, and it shatters easily. The birth gem clatters to the ground, along with a multitude of bone fragments. Okay. You reacquire the birth gem. That's good. I like that the MacGuffin was used in a puzzle. Like, instead of just, uh, you got it, congrats. Like, it, it meant something. I could use it. That's pretty good. What was I doing? Oh, right, the Nightingale. So yeah, she, she gives you a genie, and then you, like, use it to get a bridle and a magic carpet. And something else. Maybe a sword. But escape isn't working anymore. Hmm... Birth gem get times two. That's weird. Anyway. So. Uh, I guess we can take the cloth off of it. Here you go. You offer the nightingale to Angelina. That's her name, the I guess. Sheer elation on her face almost makes the whole risk worth the while. She snatches it from you and proceeds to fuss over the bird. You wait for a moment, but it seems she no longer notices you. <clears throat> if you don't mind, about the lamp you promised me and trade for the nightingale? The shopkeeper looks up at you vaguely. She gradually remembers that there is another being in her world. <laughs> yeah? Oh, yes, take it. You'll have no beginning of use with it. Don't you mean no end of use? Of course. Whatever you say, dear. You hear Angelina muttering cheerfully to herself as she exits. Finally, I have the final ingredient for that marvelous youth potion. I am going to beat you to the punch, my dear Agatha. Serves you right for hoarding this sweet, juicy thing to yourself. You feel a nauseous tinge in your stomach. Well, at least the lamp is now yours. Aww. You take the old lamp. Okay. The oil lamp is fashioned of brass and has been tarnished. There's a spout at one end and a round handle at the other. The lamp is empty inside. Well, let's let's do the thing. You rub the lamp and wait expectantly, but nothing happens. You're about to give it another try when a small puff of smoke appears at the end of the spout. It clears, revealing a note. As you remove it, the lamp disappears. You read the scroll. See, the unlucky fool who bought this lamp. As you may have gathered, this lamp no longer contains a fabulous genie, as my former master, praise him and his greatness, has released me with his final wish. However, as consolation, please be advised of the following. Uh, the shopkeeper is not to be trusted. She dabbles in the black arts and keeps rather distasteful company. May these words reveal what lies beneath, and may your findings lead you to a higher position in life. Oh. So hard like a stone and white like the snow, stand silent the man who guards what's below. May you forever know the beauty of freedom. Signed, Nibor Simawil. Genie. <laughs> oh. Rest in peace. Anyway, it's this guy. Upon closer examination, you discover that the statue hides a small latch. You flip the latch and watch in amazement as a trap door opens up from the floor. Alright, well, let's do this. You test the strength of your stomach muscles by performing an impressively hard blow to your own guts. You wish you hadn't done that. That's good. If you wish to cl I want to go down the trap door. How do I go in it? Oh. You close the trap door behind you. Okay. Oh, what's this? You see. 
You read the letter sitting on the desk. Angelina, once again, I, put, I have put to you an invitation to join our illustrious community. Unsurprisingly, you have heard of its reputation through other channels. I personally encourage you to give it serious thought. We are not only interested in a new membership from the mages of this world. This invitation goes out to all who believe that, when the appointed time comes, only the faithful will be rewarded. The rest of those poor, unenlightened fools will perish. All that is asked in return is complete allegiance to the Father. He has guided us from the beginning, and his power is far older than most. I know you are hesitant due to concerns regarding the dress code. Let me assure you, the black would look simply charming on you, dear. My gratitude goes out to what you to you for your flattering assertion that I would make a fine ruler of Kalima. What a shame that the former ruler has lost all interest in his homeland. I cannot blame him, however. The change struck him quite hard. To answer your earlier question, yes, I have acquired a nightingale. They are most uncommon in this region, and yes, I am quite sure that it is the final ingredient required to complete my youth potion. As much as I would like to share it with you, I'm afraid that a single nightingale will provide only enough solution for one person. In any event, I shall, of course, pay you a visit the moment the youth potion takes effect. H. So, she is definitely referencing the Black Cloak Society, which comes up in King's Quest VI, and really only King's Quest VI. But it's sort of retconned to believe that, uh, basically most of the villains in the series are a part of it. Mananan and Mordak, at least. We'll, we'll meet them later. But this implies that Hagatha is also a part. Anyway, what do we got? You see a colorful rolled up carpet. As you pick up the carpet, you notice a small label which reads, Property of Al Din. There might be a faded letter or two in there, but you cannot be sure. Above you, oh, in no. the back room, you discern Angelina's voice. I did it! I did it! The youth potion is finally finished. All I need to do now is drink it. She sounds really concerned about that. Angelina, All I need to do now is drink it. Hmm. Agatha? My dear! What an unexpected sur- Don't you play the fool with me! I know you stole it! <laughs> stole? Really? I do not know. Silence! For your lies and deceit, there can be only one consequence. Shit. No! Please! Um. Your invitation to join us is revoked. What is this? Ah, the youth potion at last. Oh no! Oh. Drat! Now what was that spell for removing floorboards? Curses. Uh, should I, I take to that? Go back and look it up. You fish around in the pile of down and successfully retrieve the youth potion. A tangled mass. You have neither the time. You'd better not. Okay, let's get out of here. Cautiously, you open the. You flick the. And let's go. Actually. You do not want to go back. Okay. Okay. So, uh, that, that played out slightly differently than in the original. Um... So, can we use this here? There's not... Okay. Escape key's back to working. How about here? You unroll the magic carpet, lay it on the ground, and sit on it. The carpet begins to rise skyward. We've got a sword, and our sword's great. As you ascend higher, you realize that the carpet is beyond your control. It glides through the air on a seemingly predetermined course. Okay. Hmm. 
There is a snake here. There's very little I can do with a snake. Uh, ooh, can I hypnotize it? You dangle the shimmering opal in front of the snake. It soon falls hypnotized in typical snake fashion. You know, like snakes do. Okay. So in this hole in a uh, in King's Quest 2, there was a, a like a promo for Space Quest. Let's see what's happening here. You reach into the cavity and feel around. What is this? You've discovered a button hidden inside the rock. You press it and wait to see what happens next. In an instant, a man stands beside you. He appears to be somewhat of an adventurer, much like yourself. Greetings. I am King Graham of Daventry. The newcomer nods in greeting. Without a word, he respectfully appraises you. You notice about him the manner of one who has only recently learnt the meaning of heroism. From where do you hail, good sir? The man opens his mouth to answer, but then pauses to consider that question. Evidently deciding that irrelevant exposition would serve neither party, mm -hmm. he casually gestures to the hole in the rock behind you. Might I inquire something of your identity? After a brief search of his own person, the man pulls out a scroll card and hands it to you. Hmm. You unroll it, and it reads, Having fulfilled the requirements in accordance with the statutes of the famous Adventurer's Correspondence School, the bearer is a qualified would-be hero. The man also shows you a medallion. Upon it are the words, Hero of Spielberg. You reverently return the scroll to the man. A famous Adventurer's Correspondence School. With That's a impressive. Sigh of resignation, the man shakes his head silently. Surely you might speak to me of your adventures. The man becomes quite enthused about the prospect of relating his most recent adventure to you. Just as he is about to speak, however, Hello. you notice something on the ground that the man must have dropped. You retrieve the paper. It appears to be a scroll. Upon it is some writing. Disclaimer, you have just witnessed a rather shameless plug for the remake of Quest for Glory 2 Trial by Fire by the entities of AGD Interactive. Available now. As you read the writing, the words are ingrained in your mind. The scroll disappears. So, you know, they're making another remake. Let's check out this giant conspicuous cave. Giant conspicuous cave. Okay. Ooh. This is a lair if I've ever seen one. The cave one. is adorned with the most beautiful coverings you've ever seen. The material sparkles in the light from outside the cave. There's almost something unreal about this brilliant decor. An ancient book lies open on the workbench. Though its pages are torn and faded, the cover is still a bright blood red. Okay. You flip through the book entitled, Ye Old Book of Enchantments, Causes and Cures. The first half contains a list of enchantments. These do not interest you as you have no desire to inflict inconvenience upon others. However, the cures section does capture your curiosity. While browsing, you spy a promising paragraph. Okay. So, uh, blur, 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 blur. Uh, if you miscast the spell, it's dangerous. Only the powers of an emerald can properly dispel an enchantment. Uh, so you have to create an emerald. First, heat a blue mineral and a yellow vegetable together. A plant is an acceptable alternative to the yellow vegetable. Until they coagulate into a greenish liquid. Stir the mixture with a white feather. Drop this into a perfectly clear crystal and recite, Heed now these words, crystal perfect. Green is thy hue, restore correct. Guard well my form, preserve, protect. This is probably that asshole wizard's cave. Uh, you will now have the means to safeguard yourself should your enchantments ever get out of hand. To restore what that which is under the effect of an enchantment, simply allow a strong light to pass through your emerald at the subject. Then behold the restoration. So we need a blue mineral and a yellow vegetable. Um, and then stir it with a white feather, then a perfectly clear crystal, and then talk to it. Let's look around for some other stuff. A collection of books are stacked side by side on a nearby shelf. Most of the titles are written in a mysterious language that you don't understand. So you suspect that they are about magic. Magic. 
A neatly displayed scroll hangs on the wall. Mm -hmm. Some incredibly valuable furniture has been placed. As you had been expecting, this is your average, ordinary, run-of-the-mill cave. You are naturally surprised to see it is fully decorated and very well furnished. All right, so... As you had been... As you... You approach the workbench for a closer look. All right. So, we have... I mean, we can use one of these as the blue mineral. You toss the earrings into the beaker. Then this is like a yellow vegetable, because it said a plant can you be... You toss the sickly yellow flower into the beaker. Okay. So we need to heat it. Uh, this is a, a candle. Nothing. Nothing. Hmm. We can... Oh, is that flint? Can we strike it? You strike the blade of your sword against the flint stone. It sparks, and the wick catches a light. You watch, fascinated, as the two unlikely objects melt under the heat of the magical flame. Okay, uh, so we need to stir it with a white feather. Boop. You stir the mixture carefully with the white feather. It soon dissolves in the hot liquid. Now we need a clear crystal. If you'll remember, there's actually one in the hilt of our sword. So I think I can pry it out with this. You managed to dislodge the crystal that had been set within the hilt of the sword almost a millennium ago. Uh. You feel a tinge of guilt and wonder what all the past monarchs of Daventry would say if they saw you damaging ancient crown property. Yeah, I imagine that, like, at this point, Graham has been king for, like, a couple years. He's got to feel like... I mean, and he got it, like be a fraud almost like he was just some dude and he completed a quest and like edward was almost dead by the time he finished it so he's got to feel like this isn't even his stuff you drop the crystal in and watch amazed as the green liquid slowly seeps into it and then we have to talk to it heed now these words crystal perfect green is thy hue restore, restore. correct, correct. Guard well, well my, my form. form. Preserve, Preserve. Protect. Protect. You recite the words correctly, line okay. for line, and sure enough, only a brilliant emerald remains in the glass beaker. You quickly blow the flame out so as not to overheat the emerald and cause damage to it. All right. Well, picking it up gingerly. Looks like a kiwi. That the emerald took virtually no time at all to cool. All right. So yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, this is actually really helpful in sort of a general sense. I believe that the snake is enchanted. As you direct the sun's light through the emerald at the snake, you behold a wondrous transformation. Nope. I'm a horse. Before you now stands a magnificent winged horse. You're very Thank tall. You for freeing me. A horrid enchanter transformed me into that legless thing after I refused to be his steed. I... Hello. That was quite a gamble to refuse an enchanter. True. But I could not have accepted, even if I had wanted to. Accepted. For I am a disciple of the cloud, and can serve no land dweller. Disciple of the cloud? <laughs> what does that mean? You made that up, didn't you? Tell me of what you seek up here. You take a deep breath, then explain about the door of destiny, the gems of nature, and your present quest to locate the growth gem. So, you seek the sure. gem. Yes, that is right. You know of it? Most certainly, but you will not be able to reach it by any means available to you or any of your kind. I would gladly take you to it, but alas, the enchanter took and hid from me my bridle. Without it, we could search for a thousand years and still never find the cloud spirit. Where did he hide your bridle? I do not know. Perhaps a clue may be found in that blackguard's abode behind me. Blackguard. Blackguard. I think it's still pronounced blackguard, even if it's spelled that way. Alright, uh, we need some hints about where he would have done something. A, 
collection some in a collect some in an ancient book some incredible this this enchanter's staffs are very powerful objects mm. you dare not touch this one for fear of the consequences you may bring upon yourself maybe it's in the book you have no hmm. you have I don't know. Some incredibly a neatly displayed the scroll the sc you never did pay much attention during magic classes at Daventry High School. As a result, mm. nothing in these books will help you. Now that you mention it, there really was nothing in Daventry. Oh shit. Uh oh. <clears throat> the enchanter has caught you in his lair. He twirls his hands, aims them at you, and then utters some words under his breath. You feel a tingling sensation all over your body as the enchantment attempts to transform you into whatever the enchanter has fancied. At the same time, you also feel the comforting energy of the emerald Ooh, she. Ooh, emerald. The enchanter's twisted smile turns downwards. He scowls at you. What, you want to fight, wizard? There is a look of panic on the man's face. He does not dare breathe. I hereby order you to depart from Kalima forever, never to trouble its, its nice citizens sword. again, lest you were in the fullness of my wrath. The enchanter looks baffled. I don't think it's you how you're supposed to hold it. And try again. Leave. If you come back, then you will get it. The enchanter nods frantically as much as he can without cutting his own neck on your sword edge. He gestures quickly with his hand. I don't think I've ever seen this before. I guess he took his uh his place with him, was this? You notice that some writing has been engraved into the wall. You read the inscription. In row of stones that number six, half and a pair from left do pick, quelled in my spell, avoid the tricks. Half and a pair. So three and two, so fifth from the left. All the right. Engraving on the wall reads, <laughs> "In row of stone." I I read that. Okay. So row of stones. And uh, and and we know where that is, if we can get out of here. So can I use the carpet like here? There's not. There's not enough room. This kind of in front, then. Okay. You unrolled the car. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. So it should be this one. You bend over. Yeah. Incredible. The rock has transformed into a silver studded bridle. So yeah, I'm not sure how that, like, I must have played an earlier version of the game because I swear I didn't do that to the enchanter. You take the bridle. Um, but either way, we did it. Let's use this. You unroll. Okay. As you reach down to get the carpet, uh -oh. it vanishes into thin air without even so much as a puff of smoke. Oh, uh, I guess we didn't want to animate that. All right. Well, that means we're done, right? It's horse time. I found your bridle. You slip the bridle over the horse's head. It whinnies its approval. Why would a talking climb horse whinny? On my back. Uh, okay. Yep. Hold on. This will be a little accelerating. Accelerating. We've got the a new sick ride now. The cloud gracefully soars high into the sky. 
You grip the reins tightly and hold on for dear life as he swoops and dips between the clouds. After a time, he draws near to a thick patch of luminous mist. As you pass through it, the horse sets itself down, seemingly on top of a cloud. It is all right. You can dismount now. You say that. Believing that you have finally lost all sense of reason, you dismount and prepare for a very long drop. And find yourself standing on a cloud. All right. Hello, you call out. There is no response. Your hand ha- Cool. You are surrounded by nothing more than cloud. Why you have not already fallen to your death is a complete mystery. Though you are somewhat glad of the fact. Yeah, it's not like he hasn't walked on clouds before. Well, no. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um... Hello? That. What's up? What is this spirit you speak of? The essence of what you see. Essence. It passes through us as we grow, all through our lives, though few are ever aware of it. You will know soon enough. Okay. Why do you ch it is my destiny, and I must fulfill it, just as you must fulfill yours. I was not aware that I had one. All of us have a destiny. All of Some us. are predestined, others are determined by choice. Why does this horse have this weird be of the latter. Sean Connery accent? How is it possible that I can stand upon thin air? Such are not the questions you should be asking. Oh, hey. You have come for the air gem, or the growth gem, as it was once named by the ancients. It has not been termed thus without reason, for one who would have the gem as his own must prove himself grown and thus worthy of it. Meaning, no disrespect. Uh, mm. Cloud spirit. Thank you. You must agree, Cloud Spirit, that I am a man fully grown, ha. thus fulfilling your prerequisite. A howling Done. wind deafens you momentarily, though you feel nothing on your skin. The Cloud Spirit speaks again, a little more forcefully. It is not enough that you have grown in body. That much is evident. But you're being a dick, and that's sort of uh, counting against you in spirit. In mind and soul. So on thee shall you be tested. Tested? Those who bear the burden of king are expected to possess certain qualities. Your actions will be judged against the weight of these. It shall be seen whether you are deserving of your title. It shall be seen whether you are worthy of the growth gem. After a moment of silence, the cloud spirit intones... Behold your first test. Oh no, I can't save. Then a slight dizziness oh, overwhelms you for an instant. How strange, you no longer recall anything past this moment in time. It is as if this is happening again for the first time. Even stranger, you are still vaguely aware that you are undergoing a test of some kind. Though for what purpose, you cannot fathom. But look, it is Malvolio, your best Malvolio! Friend. The two of you are deeply engrossed in the game of bat and ball. Tiny Graham has a much bigger head. Whoop! At least that kid sounds basically normal. Oh no, actual king. You there. Y yes Yes? Is that how you address your liege? Um, no, your majesty, King Edward, sir, I mean sire. Which of you two boys threw that ball? The one that just happened to land on my head? Is this King Edward? 
Uh, hello. What are friends for? Okay, so these are all... These are all kind of cute. Um... Like, I'm pretty sure why any sensible person would do it under the circumstances is he yells run. Um... Partners in crime sounds like you share it. The sacrificial lambs... I don't know. These are all vague. Um... What are friends for? So what are friends for? I feel like this sounds... I feel like what are friends for means I either blame it on myself or him. And the sacrificial lamb... Is the other one. So sensible person is run. Absolute absolution. I don't know what that would be. Partners in crime. We both did it. Um... I'm going to pick this one. You summon all your courage and speak up. Your Majesty, if you please, it was I who hit the ball of the castle wall. It was my fault completely. Please do not punish my friend. The king eyes you carefully. You wonder if you are now in serious trouble. I would not punish one for something so trivial. However, I will see you play your game elsewhere, away from here. Y yes, sire. One more thing, my young fellow. You have demonstrated good character today by taking the blame for your friend. The finest knights in this realm demonstrate their compassion by protecting others, even if that should mean putting themselves at risk. I find that to be a rare quality in the many I meet. When you have grown up, I hope to see you again. Perhaps in my service. Yeah. Thank you, your majesty. Edward likes us. I think we did the good thing. I still can't save you guys. Behold. Oh, dang. You feel yourself growing older, more so than before the tests began. Again, dizziness overcomes you. Your memory of the previous test fades, and in its place, your mind is filled with the knowledge of everything that has since come to pass. This includes, unfortunately, the dreadful misfortunes which have plagued Daventry since the coming of the terrible three-headed dragon. Crap. To make things worse, your 17-year-old daughter has been demanded as its latest sacrifice. Your daughter. In return, it will not harm the rest Guess of the Guess what her name is. Until the next demand. You would go forth to destroy the dragon yourself, but you no longer have the heart for such quests. Never have you felt so forlorn, so frail. You fear that, given the choice, you would do anything to rectify the situation. Nah, this is King's Quest 2, or 3. 3. A charming view. No wonder you come here so often. You. I will see you hanged for this intrusion. Guards! Guards! Calling them will do you no good, for even if they come, they will find their king speaking to only the heirs. So this is the guy from the beginning that was talking to. Me. Who are you? To Hagatha. My name, my true name, has been heard by none for an eye on a millennium. It is enough that you know me as the father. Yeah. Then say what you have come to say and be gone. <laughs> you never were one for small talk. You cursed my family. As a result, that dragon is now loose upon the land, and one of my children was kidnapped. Now that is not quite the truth. Do you deny your involvement? Not at all. It is just that you have omitted so much. Speak, and be gone. Very well. I want your crown. You cannot believe what you have just heard. This vile creature has caused untold misery throughout your land for nearly 18 years and has now infiltrated your castle just to ask that you hand over your authority to him? Of all the outrageous. Is that what this is all about? You want to rule Daventry? <laughs> what would I want with a puny little kingdom when in a few short years I will have more power than Legitimore himself? Legitimore. No, the more of legend. Only the thing you wear atop your head, your crown. The, the literal it crown. It is an essential part of my plan. Without it, my efforts to prepare for the ascension will have been in vain. I have waited far too long to be deterred from it now. If you need it that badly, you could have just taken it. 
You had plenty of opportunities. Are you completely ignorant of the legends of your predecessors? None can possess the crown of the first king unless it's given. If you think for one moment that I would... Before you speak further, consider this. In exchange for what I ask, I shall leave my curse and all that it entails from you and your blighted land. You shall have both it and your family restored in full. Minus your title, naturally. The sequels will have to be a random my asshole mind quest. At these words. For almost two decades, a countless number of innocent people have suffered under the afflictions Daventry has had to endure. How did that happen? So you got the shield back. You got suffer the magic mirror. Notwithstanding the pain you feel over your own family's misfortune, with a simple statement, you could put an end to it all. Oh, now I can save. All right. Okay. I don't think Legitimore comes from King's Quest Seven. That had Prince Throckmorton. Uh. Mm. So yes, sort of. Fuck you. I don't know what pride coming for all else is. Or final act. I just saved. I can fuck around. You shall never have the crown. And I shall make sure it will never be of any use to you. I would rather die than to risk it falling into your hands. Whoop! <laughs> Such a foolish sacrifice. I suppose he thought of it as no. Eight is the bad 3D one. It is a good thing you cannot actually die during these tests. Quite convenient, really. Behold. As before, the knowledge of the previous test, many mm -hmm. years have passed. Your children, once heirs to your throne, have forged their own paths in other kingdoms. Fortunately, chance has seen fit to fill the vacuum. Following the vacuum. restoration of the Mask of Eternity, Daventry now has a new champion. How do you feel? I am deeply honored, sire. All right. Now, how do you really feel? Scared out of my wits, sire. You smile and feel the lines in your face stretch. You hope you'll get used to it when the true time comes. You know what they've been saying about my decision, that is. The people question my ability to perform the duties when I have another higher obligation. I believe that I can attend. I don't know what his higher obligation is if never played Mask of Eternity. You do not deny that this obligation may arise at any moment. Perhaps taking you away from this country at a time of great need? Of course not, sire. But I shall deal with that troll, as they say, when I cross that bridge. And there is the matter of you not being of royal birth. I mean, neither was I. That does not sit comfortably with some of the nobles. The qualities of truth, right, and order can shine from even the most impoverished of souls. Nobility is defined through one's actions, not one's lineage, your majesty. You cannot help but smirk. For a man who had once lived as a peasant, he speaks extremely well. Yeah, it sounds like he's holding his nose when he talks. Uh, anyway, I don't... I'm gonna say not tonight. I have carefully thought over the matter put before me. It is true that I no longer have a residing heir to carry on in my place. However, I cannot place the future of this kingdom in the hands of one who, while possessing great skills, courage, and virtues, may not be able to serve her with singular devotion. Go back to your village, Connor. Fuck off, Connor. Sire. Despite his gracious acceptance, you sense that Connor has been dealt a rather severe moral blow. Graham was noble. All right. Yeah, I, I'll believe that. I mean, how else do you get to be a, a knight? In an instant, you find yourself standing before the cloud spirit once more. 
you also notice that it is starting to get dark. You have demonstrated some understanding of compassion, honor, and loyalty. These attributes transcend the mind and speak of the soul within you. Growth continues unabated throughout the lives of all living things. While you still have much to learn, you will continue to grow in all ways. You are judged worthy. Okay, that's cute. Um, let's restore. Uh, what you missed? What? Can I punch this guy? You die forward, swing right. your fist at Just the man to hit him. To your astonishment, your hand passes right through his face. Did you think I would be so foolish as to come unprepared this time? I learned my lesson well. Mmm, foreshadowing. Anyway. To give you my crown would signify a change of leadership. So says the law of this land. It also says that the crown is to be worn only by those with the highest regard and intent for Daventry. So, to give it to such a vile being as you would betray the honor and memory of all the past kings who have worn it. No, I will not do it. Not even for the sake of your family? There are some principles for which even one's family must be sacrificed. Damn. The man appraises you as a scientist would a unique specimen. What an intriguing set of morals you have, King Rhea. I always look forward to the time when you will put aside your obligations here and seek me out. I have foreseen that we shall meet again. Behold your third test. I don't think I punched anyone in the King's Quest 1 remake. Once again, you feel Yeah, okay. Anyway. It's time. I have decided, after long and careful consideration, that in order to earn your knighthood, thou must venture forth on a quest to capture and kill the most insidious and elusive of preys. What is this prey? A dragon? No. More wretched than that. A trihorn scaled beast of the southern plains? No. More woeful still. Surely not the scourge of the low mountains? The flesh burrowing scorpion? No. But it does get under your skin all the same. Then pray tell of what do I seek? That. The talking owl? Precisely. Charge! Oh, Frederick. Connor's like, what? In an instant, you find yourself standing before the Cloud Spirit once more. You also notice that it is starting to get dark. You have demonstrated some- Alright, let me, uh, let me do this the right way. I'll- s I'm still punching the guy, though. Okay. So, uh, you can go fuck yourself. You can also go fuck yourself. Uh, Connor, you- Connor wasn't a bad guy. He had a stupid um, accent for no reason, and his game was awful. But he was he was fine. He he put a lot of work into trying to restore Daventry. So let's let's make him a knight. Neil, your sword. By virtue of your bravery, loyalty, and good conscience, I have chosen you to be my first knight. Thus you are my successor and heir to this throne. Doop. Doop. Arise, Sir Connor of Daventry. In an instant, you find yourself standing before the Cloud Spirit once more. You also notice that it is starting to get dark. Alright. You have demonstrated your sound understanding. Yeah. Compassion, 
honor, and loyalty. These attributes transcend the mind and speak of the soul within you. You have grown much, learnt a great deal, and will continue to grow in all ways. You are judged worthy of the air and growth gem. Alright. Let's take that. Let's take the thing from you the strange cloud's the mouth. Gem. As you feel the knowledge of the last test fade from your mind, the cloud beneath your feet begins There's to evaporate. Shit. You'd better get out of here quickly, Graham. This game is big on reflexes, I guess. Anyway, uh, Nalathne. Basically what happened is I fought off the Sharkies, got the trident Finally, back, got the growth gem, or the, end, the birth you gem. Hope that it will be quite a while before you take to the air again. Uh... Really, I got uh, an emerald that lets me disenchant things, which is pretty cool. Where would you like me to land? The ground. On the ground. <laughs> be fine. Sorry, I didn't know that was the joke they were gonna make. And now it's dark. Take this sugar cube. Oh. It will protect against the poisonous growth of this land. Thanks. Fare thee well. Bye. Chip, 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 chip. It's cute. As dusk sets in and the pallid moon rises above the darkened horizon, you recall the door of destiny's words regarding the third gym. In case you forgot. From Swampy Mire, in Lone Dark Castle. Then you remember the great Neptune's disquiet reluctance to speak of Kalima's lord. You sense a growing unease that this final gem may not be the easiest to acquire. Yeah, there's no sun, so I can't use the gem anymore. Anyway, we're about halfway through the game, I think. Well, um, it's the the church is open. Finding the door unlocked and unbarred, you enter the church. You notice a Bible on the end of a pew. You look over the Bible, which appears to be many decades old. You open it and find that an otherwise blank page at the front has been written on. It is dated over 20 years ago. To all those who have heard the word, we are the chosen few, blessed by the spirits of the wild, destined for greatness. Concealed by the cloth, there is but one challenge you must overcome before a future can be set in stone. The simple people of Kalima cling still to the memory of their former ruler. Even now, years after his fate's dark turn, they retain their hope that he will be not forsake them. As long as this is so, our goal cannot be attained. So, my brothers, it is our duty to see the land cleansed of its blight. Do not fear our enemy. Dang you it! Found it. You also notice that a page from the Bible has fallen onto the floor. You pick up the fallen page and read it. The words appear to have been written recently. Silently with newfound skill, wily souls naughtily steal. Silently with newfound skill. S W N S. Newfound souls and. Yeah, this takes place on Earth. Uh. Uh, okay. Hello? The monk is indeed. Should we should we pray with him? Feeling humbled, you kneel down to pray. You rise again after a few moments. The monk stirs, stands, and turns to face you. Hello. Father, I go now to a place of darkness. While I am stout of heart, the path laid down before me is unclear. I seek only the knowledge that my passage be illuminated by heavenly favor, and a prayer that I may make it through. The monk gives you a reassuring smile and pats you on the shoulder. He then lifts a silver cross from around his neck and places it in your hands. Thank you. You are welcome, my child. You can talk? Of course. <laughs> I thought monks were forbidden from speaking. That's a different Not sect. Not all churches follow the same rules. And this church is quite unique. Really? How so? 
The monk just smiles placidly at you. All right. A hideous statue of a grinning fiend forms an archway leading to the church's outdoor cemetery. That's nice. Yep, this this looks nice. Lester Williamson, 1300 to 1345. Here lies a man who feared all bugs, too scared to even lift his rugs. For if he had, he would have found insects that make little sound, with bites so deadly for their size that surely did cause his demise. Mm. Rarlop Neven, 985 to 1015. The jester joked his life away until a quip he made one day. Insulted was a barren son who had this poor old jester hung. <laughs> Rebecca Twintle, 1250 to 1273. 23. In that usual daring way of hers, she threw caution to the wind. Late one eve, she risked a venture and went out to sea with him. Totally in love she was, so filled with careless whim that when he threw her overboard, she never thought to swim. Jeez. Goulash Thompson, 1370 mm, to Never in all his living years had he ever seen such sights. For hours did he stare at them, those beautiful, dazzling lights. So happy was he that he'd been able to live to see this night. But down a cliff he blindly fell, for the lights had been too bright. Hmm? Larman Adnarb, 1175 to 1200. Dear old Larman was a healer, cured many a deadly fever. One he caught that bitter day, healed not himself and passed away. Mm. Roust Odide, mm. 943 to 1011. As I landed on my head, I said I should have stayed in bed instead. That's a poor rhyme. Here lies the Adnarb family. Evidently, they were well respected to have their own area. It was definitely Brandon backwards. Lyot O'Malley, twelve hundred to twelve fifty six. She was a lady with strange habits, who his friends kept only rabbits. When time came, her hunger due, her friends all wound up in her stew. The other creatures, also bunnies, found this not remotely funny, so their swift revenge they sought. The kitchen in her sleep they brought, heaved her into the large pot, which was, regretfully, much too hot. Heard by bunnies. Bridget O. Troublewater, 1248 to 1299. During the annual house inspection, she spied a mirror and its reflection. For days she lovingly gazed at it, unable to sleep or eat or sit. With the last of her earthly power, there she remained till her final hour. This is the church cemetery. It is likely that... Huh? Faith Cinders, 998 to 1029. Alas, my dear, you've come too near to your heart's great desire. It seems that now you've run afoul and should not have lit that fire. Faith Cinders. Judas Morton, 1365 to 1415. Here lies a foolish non-believer with shame deep is this hole, even God, though wise and powerful, cannot save his wretched soul. Yeah, I think it's a... Uh... Lyot O'Malief. That's not it. Larman Adnarb, 1175 to yeah, 1200. Brandon Dear Omrol? old Larman was a healer, cured Minver, one he caught that better Yeah, day. it's Marlon Brando. This is the church. Hamish Bite, 1226 to 1258. Besides religious connotation, reverence paid daily as we should. It is a tradesman's irony that a carpenter was killed upon the wood. Le Fleur Povis. <laughs> Keeps going. to 987. The power brought unto this world is as unholy as this sage. Doomed are those that have descended from the blood of a first mage. That seems like a reference to something, but Crickle I don't know. Crickle Air Rule, 1205 to 1252. The writer wrote, until he bled, in his final agony he said, I will not lift my trusty pen till I at last have reached the end. Coco Air... Okay. You've never been terribly fond of gargoyles. 
and this one isn't likely to sway your opinion. All right, well that's uh that's cool. We found a we found a grave. Uh, what's in here? You have about as much. Okay. Well, you know, we we explored the church. That's good. Start scared. Oh God! Wolves dart out. Oh, I can't do anything about this. Oh. For a minute there, you thought those wolves were going to attack. Curious as to why they didn't, you decide to follow them. You see the monk standing alone outside the church. The first mage is Legend of two wolves approaching him. You are about to yell a warning to the monk, but the words die in your throat as the man steps forward and pats the wolves' heads. No, my brothers. We must not hurt him. Not yet. He will go to the heathen's abode. He will do what needs to be done. What if he does not? Then, my brothers, we will complete the task before us. The one we began many years ago. Oh, dear. Uh... Yeah, I, uh... Hmm. You quickly move away from the church, your heart racing faster with every step. You have a good idea now what will happen once the moon comes out in full, and you do not want to be anywhere near here when it does. One thing's for sure, you're not getting married in that church. In the original King's Quest 2, the church is pretty much played straight. Like, the, the priest blesses you, you get a cross, helps protect you from evil, and, uh... And, uh, you do get married there at the end of the game. It's dark and scary. You hear the sound of a child sobbing nearby. Uh, how nearby? Like, on this screen or, like, a screen over? Oh, a screen over. As you approach, you recognize the child. It is Possum, the little girl you helped earlier today. Uh, sup? Are you all right? What happened? I went into town to buy some chicken soup for my grandma. I always try to reach home before dark. But this Why do you talk like that? I lost my way and was, was att attacked. Attacked? A wolf attacked you? No, not by a wolf. A dwarf. A dwarf. For a moment, you're not sure that you heard correctly. Uh, a dwarf, did you say? Listen, I'm going to try to find this dwarf that you say stole your food. You get back to your grandma, understand? Possum nods, says a soft thank you, and heads back home. All right. It's time to fight this motherfucker. As soon as my, uh, mouse gets back to working. It's an old, like, Bluetooth mouse. So it can't just, it can't connect very well. Right now, I guess. Dang it, whatever. I'll use the touchpad. The mouse seems to be back to normal. Alright, so I think I knock on the door. You rap on the treehouse door and wait a moment, but get no response. And then I hide... You watch as a little man runs out of the door, which has been built into a tree. You surmise that you have found the culprit's home. The vague aroma of chicken soup confirms it. Mm. That fiend. I'm hungry. And he's just gonna leave, I guess. So fuck him. Nope. In. Graham. Finding the door. Okay. Hmm. 
We have a knife. That's not a knife. The knife you found under a rock one time? Now that was a knife. All right. You grab the handle of the bubbling pot. And this chest would also have anything that he stole from us. Upon in addition to... Trunk, you find a number of items that the dwarf has obviously stolen and stashed away. Among them are some gold coins. They display the distinctive face of the first king. They could only have come from the magic chest of Daventry. The same fucking dwarf. You close the chest. Moving the barrel. That's... Anyway, I you think... Hear the sound of the oh, door shit. Uh, into the chest. Thinking quick. The dwarf has entered his underground hovel. Hopefully, he won't discover you in here. Let's talk to Soup, though. You sense that the coast is clear again. All right, let's get the hell out. It looks like the... Whoops. Well, whatever it was. The nighttime is basically when the game gets interesting. Welcome. Come in, please. Possum told me to expect you. That's the possum's little bed. The little girl is sound asleep. Okay, um I brought you some soup. It is a little too cold. Okay. I just got it from the you fire like a couple the now seconds cold ago. Chicken soup over the crackling fire once more. After it heats up to eating temperature, you remove it again. Okay. You offer the oh, was that supposed to be a puzzle? Grandma. Introduce yourself and wait courteously while the frail elderly lady eats the nourishing meal. When she is finished, she sets the empty bowl down elsewhere and turns her attention elsewhere. towards you. Uh, hey. If you would like to speak with me for a while, I would welcome your company. A person should never turn away a visitor, especially when she reaches the twilight of her life. You can't help but feel a sense of finality in the old woman's words. You must have something in return for your kindness. You do not need to risk your safety for an old worn out woman like myself. Look under the bed. You should find something to keep you a little warmer on a cold night like this. Uh, do you want a youth potion? The elderly lady. Okay. You peer under the bed and find a thick black cloak. Lying atop it is a beautiful ruby-encrusted ring. You pick both up with reverence. I'm sure you can eat old cold soup, but why would you want to? From you. Oh, please. I want you to have some. Nights in Kolima are cold, believe me. As for the ring... Well, perhaps it is better that I do not have it to remind me. As you wish. Alright, uh... Thanks. You have a charming young granddaughter. Voice is kind of weird, though. At you graciously. She is a treasure to me. I would do anything to ensure that no harm comes to her. Is that Before what you were doing inquire, earlier? What became of her parents? Grandma frowns, and her eyes darken for a moment before she forces a melancholy smile to her face. <sighs> they were lost to us many years ago. I am afraid the possum never really knew her parents. It must have been a daunting task raising a child by yourself, especially at your age. Uh, I mean... At my age? <laughs> I am certainly not as young as I used to be. Temperature I hella matters no when eating. No one that. wants to eat cold soup. I have tried to raise her as best I could. 
to keep her safe and well. However, I fear that as of late the reverse has become truer. Hmm. If you please, I was hoping you might tell me of the cloak and ring's origin. The old woman closes her eyes as if the memory she seeks is painful to her senses. They were my husbands. He was a proud man. The last of his line. His family had been rich. A great deal of old money, you might say. They lived in that castle you might have seen to the north. Its location upon that island is evidence of how much they valued their privacy. He was a good man, my husband. He took care of me. Certainly he had his strange habits. Most men do, if you will pardon me for saying so. I suspect that he practiced magic, so I could never catch him in there. I don't think Espacho he has cheese in it, just tomato. Afar, taking that black cloak with him wherever he went, to places he would not talk about. He said that it represented something important to a certain oh, group no. of people, and that I was never to mention it to anyone. He's part of the Black Cloak but he Society. Was always there for me, always until that fateful night. Your husband was an evil wizard. We had been married just over a year, and I was heavy with child. We were both out walking in the weirwood forest late one night. The air was warm, and in our youth, we paid little attention to the world and its many dangers. Besides, there was a full moon. We could see clearly enough. A shadow passed over us. We looked up, thinking it might have been a stray cloud. She's def it was definitely not. married to Dracula. Sending upon us like a demon was the largest, most hideous bat I had ever seen. That's cute. And it drove straight for me. I must have screamed. My husband flung himself in front of me to protect me. He swung his arms about frantically in hopes of warding the horrid thing away. Perhaps he was trying to cast a spell, but could not recall how in his panic. It paid him no heed and would not be deterred. It swooped again and again relentlessly. At one point, my husband's hand must have clicked the bat's wing because it lost control and crashed into his shoulder. He tried to wrest the foul creature away, big bat. but then he shrieked suddenly. The horrid thing had bitten him. He never did recover from that incident. He just faded with each passing hour. Within two days of the attack, my husband had died. We buried him on his family's plantation on the island. This is a different grave. Grave area cemetery. Sometimes when I sleep, I can feel him watching over me. Guarding me. Protecting me. I think he is waiting for my time to come so we can be together always. The old lady seems to be dozing off. You can barely hear her final words. I miss him so. Telling the story has clearly taken a great deal out of her. You watch the old woman a moment and notice her labored breathing as she sleeps. Despite the little girl's tireless daily efforts, perhaps there's nothing more to be done. So in the original game, uh, so here, like, she's married to Dracula. In the original game, there's just, like, the ring and cloak under her bed for no reason. Uh, and she, she gives it to you, but, like, there's, there's no in-game explanation for why she has it. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I don't know. These coins each have the distinctive face of the first king. You read the Bible page again, silently with newfound skill. South, west, Ryan's north, south, west, steel. south, north, south. Alright, well, let's get out of here. Meanwhile.